so this is a drawing that I did beforehand and it's at the stage now where I want to add some ink to it. I am going to use this kind of ink. It's called Platinum Carbon Ink and these dipping pens. I am just learning to use these kind of pens so you can learn with me. They're a lot of fun. I'm going to start by lightening up my drawing just so I don't have a bunch of overwhelming lines and also if I try to draw over top of the of the pencil lines with the ink it can get out in the way of the contact with the paper so I'm just gonna lighten it up and I'll speed it up here. Well that looks pretty good and light. Now you might not be able to see it really well but I can see it and you will see the drawing appear with the ink. And I always recommend that you watch and listen to my drawing first and then turn the sound off and and just watch. Watch more than once, you'll pick up something every time. So let's get started. If I get quiet during this drawing, it's because I'm concentrating. Think really carefully about where I want to start and go in easy. The eyes are pretty important. Sometimes I just start with a couple of lines for the eyes because sometimes it's good to just to not draw all of, around them. You know, because we don't always see the lines all around something in the natural world. So I want to think really carefully about what which lines I add. So I'm just kind of, you know, defining the lines. I might fill more of these in later, but for now I'm just putting what I have to put. Think really carefully about what I add because sometimes it does look a lot better without all the mouth lines in. Mm -hmm. I got that one going a little bit the wrong way, but that's okay. You can always fix things later. You learn how to fix things too. In order to be good at your art, you have to learn to hide your mistakes. Because you will make mistakes. That's just how it is. And sometimes those mistakes will be happy mistakes. Getting a little bit too much ink there. It's pretty thick. So I'm going to try to use some up in some of the areas that aren't as quite as... That aren't going to stand out quite as much. You know, we want we want the paws to look like paws. Paws are one of my favorite parts of cat drawings. I like that so far. Enough definition. It's nice to show a few claws too. Look at the claw here. I don't overdo it with details because then it overwhelms the drawing and the eye, the viewer's eye doesn't know where to look, but I like to give little hints of things like claws because that, they're part of what, what make cat drawings so endearing. You know, those little creatures we have in our houses that sometimes scratch and sometimes wreck things, and but we still love them. We don't mind.
My paper's buckling a little, which can be a pain. I'm starting out with my thin nibbed, my thin nib. Um, and I'll probably move on to a thicker nib later. Shows kind of a hint of the cat's, the bottom of the cat's back leg there. I always want to make sure I don't set my hand in the ink because this ink isn't dry right away. You, know, you end up with a lot of ink there and you can mess up your drawing too. You know, some people say you, you shouldn't keep your hand on the paper but I find that really hard to do sometimes I'll go like this and just kind of let my finger hold it up but you find your own way and don't worry if you need to rest your hand on the paper do it it's your art don't listen to rules you were meant to be broken I'm a little shaky there, which means I need to anchor my hand somewhere. running out. I don't want to dip it in too far otherwise I get ink all up where I don't need it. And always when I first after I dip it I kind of go to a spot where it's not going to matter as much. If something isn't totally perfect like I wouldn't go to the eyes or anything <laughs> and that being said, I think I actually did when I first started drawing, but I don't always remember. And I want these lines as they go up towards the top of the page, I want them to kind of thin out because I don't want the eye drawn up in that direction. So more of the any detail would be down here more. And again, I'm not drawing every hair. And this ink is awesome. Um, these kind of pens are awesome, but it takes commitment to learn these kind of pens too. So if they're not your thing, you know, there's lots of other pens, just, you know, regular everyday pens. Um, I just got to the point where I I got tired of throwing away pens and I wanted to some, use something reusable. And that's why I went to these pens. And I love doing things the archaic way too. This is kind of a stump sticking out that the kitty's resting a paw on. And when I continue this branch here, I want to kind of go like this. I'm drawing in the air here to just make sure I get it so it's unified and it actually looks like it connects with here. But I'm just putting a hint there because it's a very shady area under there. Now that I've got less ink on my nib, I might focus a little more on these eyes. Oh, yeah, I got a squiggly line there. But, um, you know, it could look like a little bit of hair hanging over the eye, too. I 
I find it a little bit harder to keep a, heady, a steady hand with these pens. Everybody's different. And speaking of the hair hanging over the eye, that's a good point there. Um, I often tell people, I have a lot of people asking me all the time, can you teach me how to draw hair? And I like to say the best way to draw hair is to not draw hair. It's because it's not about every hair. We see that it's a cat and so our eye tells us there's hair and we can add little hints of hair and um, you know including here what happened here and things like this. And, um, you know, that kind of makes it look like there it's hairy in the ear so we don't we can add hair without adding every hair. This line came down a little bit too far, but again, there's always going to be some. And you got to learn how to fix that kind of thing. Getting down to this point now, I'm really being cautious about where I add lines. Kind of the elbow there. I really try to give my lines character and, you know, nice swooping flows. Just kind of... And the tail, you know, kind of fits in with the flow here of the cat and around. So keep pay attention to those kind of things more than worrying about making it perfect. Then, you're, and then you'll end up with a drawing with lots of character. Looks like I... Yeah, see, I've got some ink here from there. So you got to be careful about that. And if I just, when I, my pen hits the paper, if I just hold it really lightly and then increase my pressure as I come down, then I get that nice fading outline. I want this to fade out a bit more up here. Hmm, not really a fade, but character. You don't find it ever works out exactly the way I'm planning. If I worry about that too much, I don't enjoy the process. Um, let's go in and get some pupils done here. I just want to make sure this is dry because I'm going to need to rest my hand here. You can also put a little piece of paper. Um, but just remember, if you do that, it could soak up some of your ink. And try really hard not to let the paper move because if you do, then it will smear the ink. And we don't want that. So I'm just practicing, you know, what I'm going to do in the air first because this is a pretty crucial spot and I want a nice line. Another thing you can do is take a deep breath before you're going to draw and then let it out as you draw. I kind of messed that up anyways. That's all right. I fixed it. Um, because you're going to be less tense that way if you... Because the tendency is... Um, if you're nervous about getting something perfect or whatever or right, uh, the tendency is to hold yourself tense and that's going to make you more jittery. So that's what I'm going to do there for now. I want to really, let's see, I picked up some ink here. I got it off of there and I kind of mucked up that claw, but that's okay because again, because I did that, I'm going to be able to teach you how to fix things. So that's not paying enough attention um, and letting the paper move. We're putting the paper over where there was quite thick wet ink. I got too much ink there. One thing you want to pay attention with eyes is that you get that nice flow so they actually look like they go together. And I think I've got that here. Add that in. And I think if I add this line in too, it's going to really add to that.
I'm going to come up here and make this eye a little smaller, and I think it, that way it fits in better with this one. So we want to pay attention to this too, below. I'm going to get rid of some of this excess ink first. Because I want just a tiny bit of ink when I'm doing that eye, because that way if I make a mistake, um, it's not going to show up quite as bad. It's the eyes that I find really hard because for the, in that respect because um, you want eyes to look like eyes. Other bits, you know, if it's wonky, it just looks like it gives it character and it looks like some hair. That being said, you know, I've seen lots of art with wonky eyes and it's a matter of personal style. So it depends on your style. We don't usually see a whole lot of lines coming down from the nose there. Right here, I mean. You'll see more here. We're going to know doing, but you know, if I don't have much ink on my pen, I get a tiny bit of a line there and it helps me practice what I want to do. And by all means, if I if you're not ready to try these kind of pens, then that's perfectly fine. Um, there is a challenge to them, but all these techniques are fine with any kind of pen or pencil. Or drawing apparatus of any kind. Not look at that. I'm making a mess here, aren't I? Like I said, I'm just learning still, so, but again, I will be making a video later of showing how to correct some of the mistakes I made here. Because there will be mistakes. bit sharp there. You got to get used to the way these pens flow more because I don't feel I have as much control with them but I have only just begun using them. So I've got a lot to learn. It's good to you know kind of reinforce the spots where lines meet. It really adds a lot to the drawing so this might line meets here. This line meets with this line, so if I really um, exaggerate it by making it stronger, that can really add some character to and points of interest. Sometimes it works for me going this way and sometimes better this way, but I'm thinking overall, I think it probably works better for me going this way, but you know, you'll find your own way. I love these just quick kind of spontaneous tabby striping. It's just part of my style. It gives hints of hair, doesn't it? I'll just add a few in now.
those lovely tabby M's. Hint of the M on the forehead. It actually kind of feels a little better holding it higher up. You know, it depends on what works for you. That's what I love about teaching is I always learn when I'm teaching. A few defining lines there. More tabby stripes. Yeah, look what I did there. Got to be really careful. A lot of extra ink there. I didn't notice until I started doing the eye, so I'll get rid of some down here. And don't be afraid to, when you're following your lines to not follow them exactly because the little bits where you miss and go in and out, it just adds more life and character movement to your drawing. Hold it down here a bit. We actually like the feel of holding it up higher. Just trying to get rid of a bit of excess ink so I can go and finish a pupil for you. Oop. A good way to find out is kind of go like this. 45 degree angle is the best for drawing. See, there is still a bit of ink sitting here, so I can drag it around. Leave that one at that. Making sure I don't have excess ink. Kind of like the way this one worked out better. Be very selective of where you leave your highlights. Really think about it. There's extra ink there. See if I can pick it up. Because if I don't, it's going to end up running and kind of mucking that eye up too. That kind of gives a hint of hair. I kind of actually liked it when it was just a line going this way better though. So work in progress. So I will see you next time. Happy drawing for now.